Hi y'all, I'm Joe Tanner. I'm going to be telling you all the results of experiment two, the bomb color algorithm. All right, some of the objectives of this experiment were to become familiar with physical principles, procedures, and analysis techniques associated with that extreme bomb calorimeter. And uh, we wanted to determine the thermal capacitance of the calorimeter and determine the gross heat of combustion of the samples we used, which we used in gummy for ours. So here is the apparatus. I mean, I think both groups did the experiment by now, so you kind of know what's going on. You put your sample right here on this little thing and you feed these two wires into it and it's really particular, you have to make sure they're not touching anything and they have to be touching the, the sample to where it can produce the current or whatever. And uh, so you have to, that, that initially starts the burning process inside of this bomb calorimeter and that heats up these walls of the capsule and as a result through conduction, that heats up the water around it. And uh, we, we, we eventually get a read on the change in temperature of the water surrounding it, and that's how we produce our results. And uh, also, he mentioned before that little thing that this guy right here, this is like a little fan that spins and circulates the water to where you get an even temperature throughout it. So these will be the equations we used, and uh, essentially to start, we already know the Q value for the benzoid acid tablet, so we use the measured change in temperature and the already known Q value to determine the capacitance, the thermal capacitance of the calorimeter, and then we could, moving to the next part of the experiment, we can determine the total heat released of our sample, which was a gummy. And this is just a little recap of our procedure. Basically, we determine the thermal capacitance of the calorimeter, and then using that, we can, using that as control, we can then determine the heat release. These are some of our results. Our mass wasn't exactly at one gram, which was what was desired, but is at 0.96 grams, and uh, that was our measured heat released. Or that I believe, since our, you have a like it's like 630 something calories, which is for a benzoid acid tablet. But since we have 0.96 grams, that's our heat released, and then that was our measured change in temperature. So our determined thermal capacitance was 2,531 calories per gram. Here's a graph that shows the. Uh, transient time or transient temperature as I think that was over a period of like 30 seconds to a minute that we got those measurements. <coughs> you, have to, you have to let it reach equilibrium before you can consider it. <coughs> and using that thermal capacitance we then could uh, decide based on our measured change of temperature for the gummy combustion reaction of 1.6 degrees Celsius we then could determine that it was releasing about 440 calories whenever you combust at a gram. We, we measured to be a pretty much close to a, a gram whenever we uh, did our experiment. And uh, that is the graph for the gummy combusting. And uh, when you can compare the results from us to group one, you see that our results for the benzoa tablet were pretty similar, but our gummy results were different. Ours, I believe, Austin said that it was close to like 4,200 4, maybe calories per gram for the gummy was like the online value that we calculated. And I think, I mean, I don't know what type of gummy we used and what type of gummy was was found online, but I think there's some some possible room for error there, and that's why you see the differences between that, because we're not like totally certain, like we were for the benzoyl tablet, of what the actual value for you released. And uh, here you see, for our experiment, we have about 4.5% 4, 4 error of the from the 4,225 calories per gram. And uh, like I said, uh, some other things to consider for uncertainty would be 
the equipment we use in the ambient room center. I remembered whenever we were doing the experiment, sometimes we kept the cap off of the, I'm not going to go back, but we kept the cap off of the actual thing, which lets the water reach whatever the ambient room temperature was, and we tried to do it fast and prevent that from happening, but that changed it up a little bit, and also safety is a huge priority for this experiment because we are making bombs. Any questions? Yes. Um, the value that you got for the calories that it took from the gummy for one gram was 40, 140? Yes. Can you explain that, like, in terms, because I'm sure on the back of the of the gummy packet, it doesn't say one gram is 40,040 calories. So right, know. right. So he asked how I, pretty much how I got that Q value, and right. So the gummies we used, we didn't get them from like an actual, but it was just a Ziploc bag. Like we didn't have any direct value to look where these exact gummies came from. So basically that value comes straight from the thermal capacitance of the the calorimeter that we calculated from the prior control experiment and then we went online to find this value for a gummy that we thought was similar to what ours was and so does, does that quite answer your question? No. Yeah. Not really. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Yes. Question. What were some of the things y'all were thinking of when you put the amount of water in in the bucket. Uh, he asked what we were thinking whenever we put the amount of water in our bucket. We didn't actually put any in. It was already it was already there. But I remember he mentioned that there was a little meter that he had marked prior to the experiment that the water had to be. I know the water had to be a sp very specific amount for the experiment in order for it to go down. And uh, it was at the required amount whenever we started the experiment. So I'm not sure. <coughs> Okay. All right. Thank you all.